Hey, Transformation Church, I could not be happier to serve you today if my life depended on it. My only disappointment is that I am not there with you in person. And, you know, anyway, it would have been hard for me to be socially distant from you guys because I would have wanted to uh, squeeze you to no end because I am absolutely crazy about you. Now, I got to say this to you. Last year, I came to you already loving you by faith because I love Derwin and Vicki so much, truly. I, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that they are one of my very favorite couples in all the ministry couples I have ever known. You guys have got some leaders here that are, I mean, I, extraordinary, extraordinary, and I'm so blessed to know them. So I already came loving you by faith, and that is exactly what we're going to be talking about here Today, I am thrilled to be part of the series that uh, you're in the middle of studying about love and different aspects of it and different environments for it. So let me say this to you. The last time I was with you, your pastor Derwin was down in his back and that, that big man of, of yours was laid out on the floor in his tiny little office. I remember when I went into his office thinking, okay, this must be the foyer to his real office, but no, that little square was his entire office right there. I had so much respect for it, I didn't know what to do with it. But he laid out in the floor. Vicki can tell you that I'm telling you the truth. Laid out in the floor. And the whole time Vicki and I talked to him, we just, we bent over him like this and, and talked with him. He just blessed me. He said, now go out there and just bless the congregation. And he says this laying from the floor. So it just was unforgettable. And I got to tell you, I have some friends with me today because... I, I wanted to have some people that represented you. So I have dragged my staff with me. Uh, these are our friends. It's some of the only people in my life I can say, you know, can I pay you to be there today? And so a friend of mine uh, on my staff said just a few minutes ago before we started, she said, I love my job. I never know where I'm going to turn up. And the place we most want to be is in the scriptures. I was telling them, and as I was praying with them, before we began together, I was saying, you know, I'm always anxious before I teach. I, I take what I've been called to do very, very seriously, and man, I start feeling the burden of it days beforehand leading into it. But I remembered this morning what I've had to remember over and over again, and that is that this is what I would most want to do in the entire world. I love to be in the scriptures with people. My favorite sound in the world is the sound of Bible pages turning. So I may not be able to hear yours, but I'm asking you to turn those pages. I believe in the power of the cracked open word of God. I really, really do. I'm not talking about something mystical. I believe there is power in holding the thing, in, in feeling the weight of it, in knowing that every phrase has a sentence and every sentence has a paragraph and every paragraph has a chapter and every chapter has a book and every book has a testament, either the old or the new, that it's all connected, that it's weighty, that we're not just listening for a word that is pulled out of nowhere and it has no attachment to anything that came before it. It has no attachment to anything after it. It's just a, a word we pulled out of the sky and there, that can be a blessing at times because God is just faithful and his word never fails, but it's not the same as holding that whole thing. The Word of God revealed to us that never changes. This authority, the authority of Scripture that we are able to hold in the palms of our hands. So I pray that you will open it. And as you do, would you open your Bibles with me to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. It took me about two seconds when Pastor Derwin told me the series that you were going to be in the middle of when I got to come and serve you. It took me about two seconds to answer when he said we're going to be doing this love and in uh, with uh, forgiveness, love, this love, of that and what would you like to do on love and immediately I answered my assistant who was bringing that question to me I want to talk about loving by faith 
We talk so often about living by faith. We live by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. But I want to prove to you in the scriptures that a whole lot of living by faith is loving by faith. So Galatians chapter 5, and I want to read verses 1 through 6 to you, please. This is the word of the Lord. For freedom, Christ set us free. Stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. Take note, I, Paul, am telling you that if you get yourself circumcised, Christ will not benefit you at all. Again, I testify to every man who gets himself circumcised that he is obligated to do the entire law. You are trying to be justified. Let me start that again. Verse 4. You who are trying to be justified by the law are alienated from Christ. You've fallen from grace. For we eagerly await through the Spirit by faith the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, here is our primary text for our theme, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision accomplishes anything. What matters is faith working through love. Let me say that again. What matters is faith working through love. By this time, I hope it's having a little bit of ring to you, and I wonder if you might say it with me. What matters is faith working through love. Try that one more time. What matters is faith working through love. Let that sink in just a moment, and I want you to feel some of the weight of it. Let me tell you, Every single one of us, because we were created in the image of God, has an innate and an inherent desire to matter. We want to matter. We want our lives to matter when they're over here. We want the things we do to matter. We want our work to matter. It's sometimes why we're so frustrated in a work situation that we may be in is because we ask ourselves at the end of the day, did anything I did matter at all? All of us, all of us, it, it's, it's in us. Whether we are in Christ or not, it was put in us as image bearers of God. We want our lives to matter. We want what we do and what we pour ourselves into. We want it to count for something. And so here he says to us in these blatant and beautiful black and white words, I'll tell you what matters. What matters is faith expressing itself or working through love. That's what you can take to the bank. And what he was telling these Galatians, they were trying to still base their righteous standing before God, not only on the cross of Christ, they believed in the cross of Christ for salvation, but they also believed that, well, we better also keep part of the law. We, we better have our men circumcised when they come to Christ, even though they're Gentiles. We're going to have them go through the Jewish practices and do all of those things instead of trusting that what Christ told us was true, and that is that it was enough. The work was finished. The work was complete. And now what matters is faith working through love. Now, in every walk of life, uh, we're going to be talking about the significance of, of uh, loving by faith. But I, I do want to say this to you. I need to issue a disclaimer or two as we get started. And why? Well, because I was not born yesterday. That is one of the unfortunate things about having an older teacher is they are on to you in so many ways because my bull meter is really, really, really uh, well developed. And it is because I was so full of bull for so long that it takes one to know one. So I mean, I know when I'm in the presence of it. And I also have been in ministry for nearly 40 years. So I have heard every rationalization in the book I have heard it all, but I'm going to tell you something. What we're not talking about is we're going, going to be really centering on loving by faith. What we're not talking about is we're going to use faith as a cover for disobedience. Now, I'm going to do this anyway. Even though God said, do not do it. I warns you not to do it. No, I'm going to do it anyway because I am going to love by faith. That, that is not what he's talking about. That is not 
Faith, that is gambling. Can anybody go there with me? That is not practicing faith. That is practicing gambling. I'm going to roll this dice, and I'm going to see if I'm going to get in the trouble that he said I was going to get into. Maybe I will be the exception to the rule, and invariably, because he does love us so much, we are not the exception to the rule, and those consequences do come. So that's not what we're talking about. For instance, if um, you know to your bones. You've had every red flag imaginable that that person that you're so crazy about and that you're thinking of marrying, you've got every red flag there is to have that you better stay back from that person and that's not who you need to marry. Maybe for one thing, the Word of God already makes it clear if he's an unbeliever, she's an unbeliever. Don't. Don't be yoked to people in marriage that do not share your faith. And so we already know that. We'll say also that they have a really, really bad temper. They might have a wandering eye. Uh, they may be abusive, God forbid it. They may have a bent toward unfaithfulness. And you know in your heart, this is probably a mistake. This is probably a mistake. But you know what? I'm going to love by faith, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. That's not faith. That is disobedience. That is gambling your future, not loving by faith. So let's keep that really straight because we can put that, that, that's an example in marriage, but it can be put in any category. Let's be careful that we're not, we're not uh, confusing the two things. Now, I do want to say this. There's nothing that is a gamble about faith. Nothing about it. When we come into agreement with what God's Word says, that is not a gamble. God will always be true to His Word. I need somebody to say amen to that. He will always be true to His Word. So faith is the confidence. I mean that we are resting ourselves, our heads and our hearts, solely on the certainty of God and His Word. There is no gamble there. But I do want to say, if it's too late and you've already married that person, I just want you to know that there's going to be a whole lot of loving by faith involved, a, a whole lot of loving in, by faith, a whole lot of every day falling in and out of romantic feelings. Can I get somebody to say an amen? And I have to add one more disclaimer before we go further because it just is necessary. Distancing yourself from abuse is not loveless. It's not loveless. You get yourself out of an abusive situation. Get help, get counsel. If, if you are in danger and you need to know how to navigate it uh, very, very safely uh, to plan uh, an exit and to get yourself distanced from an abusive person. But I want you to know it, what God is not calling you to do in any way that I could understand from the Word of God is stay in a situation where you are being abused and we're going to call that loving by faith. That's not the same thing. Now, okay, so let's see what is, what is it then to love by faith? What does it look like? That's the question on the table. Well, I want to remind you, many of you have heard this verse before because it's one of the, it's a bedrock verse of our faith. The definition of faith in Hebrews 11, 1, and I just, you know, I, I love it in any translation, but the, the King James Version, it just does not get better than that. And here's New King James right here. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let me say that again, even though I know you've heard it, but let every word sink in. Now, faith, because we're like, what does it mean to love by faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if we're talking about loving by faith, that, that, that what matters is faith working through love then if we're looking that direction and it's going to be faith working through love, then that means you set those two verses by one another, Galatians 5 verse 6 and Hebrews 11 1, and here's what you're going to see, that loving by faith is loving despite no external evidence that it is working. Oh, somebody help me. Somebody help me with this lesson because this is where the rubber meets the road in the journey of faith. When it comes to loving by faith, faith expressing itself through love, then it, anytime faith is involved in love, that means there is something unseen. 
Now, we know what the scripture says if we're familiar with the words of the gospel in Luke 6, 32, where Jesus said, where he's calling them to love and calls us to love our enemies. And he says in Luke 6, 32, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. In other words, you know, we just think, oh, I just love so many people. And, and I do. I don't know if you're the kind that just like, man, I almost never meet a stranger. I'm always like really thrown when I realize that somebody just hates me because I'm thinking like, oh, I don't know. I just, I thought we were all friends. You know, I just, I sort of have that kind of, you know, I'm just happy with everybody. I just love everybody. That's not what he's talking about here. He said, I'm, he said, any sinner can do that. He said, I've called you to a higher way. I have called you to love people who do not love you. That is loving by faith. So what does loving by faith look like? I'm going to give you a couple of different things. And number one, it starts like this. Number one is, well, it looks like work. That's what loving by faith looks like. Remember that it says that faith is expressed through love that neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything but faith working through love. Well, I want you to be reminded of that word working, faith working through love, because the emphasis right here is on work, work. I do mean work. I love that I have my coworkers with me because one of the things we really have to say to people who are applying for a job at Living Proof, you probably have, ha have run into this over and over, Vicki and Derwin, and others of you that are on the leadership staff. What, one of the things we have to remind people if they are looking for a job with us or, or interviewing with us is, you know, we, we do actually work. We do actually, because I don't know what people think we do in ministry, but it's not necessarily work. You know, every now and then it's, we have to go in and go like, mm, well, actually, this, I know this is fun, but we don't just sing kumbaya. We actually do sit down and work. And I mean, like, work is work. I'm always surprised when work was work. But, you know, my husband will say, because he knows I love the people that I work with so much. And so often when I walk out the door in the morning, it will not matter how stressed I am. Keith will say to me, have fun. I just want to throw something at him. I don't really, but I sort of want to throw something at him. Because what I, I want to say is, you know I'm working, don't you? Because work, man, man, it's work. It's work. And Matthew 24, Christ told his disciples when they said, when will your kingdom come? And so he said, this, this is how you'll know that the era is advancing toward my coming and setting up my kingdom. So he gives this list of descriptions. And among those descriptions, he says, the love of many, some of your translations, the love of most will grow cold. So here's what I want to tell you, because this is convicting. I mean, this is where the word of God gets me, because Jesus is asking me through the Holy Spirit in that, in that verse and the rest of us who are now his followers, what he's asking us is, listen, do you think it's going to be easy to be exceptional? Do, do you think you're just going to accidentally be exceptional because it will be the exception the more the days advance to the coming of my kingdom. Such will be the environment that the hearts of most will grow cold. Are you not most? You want to be the fewer? Because if you do, you will never do that accidentally. So what I'm going to tell you, we're never going to love by faith accidentally. Not ever. Not ever. It will be because we have come into obedience to Christ and gone, I want to do this with you. And I'm going to tell you something. I hope you're bringing it, Lord, because all I can do is bring myself to you. Because beyond that, i got nothing to give to this mix. All I've got to give to this mix is willingness to do this with you. You know, there are people in our lives that are just easy to love. And after today's lesson, I suggest you go get them a Starbucks card. Because, I mean, those are the ones that just make everything fun. They're so easy. But then there are some that just like work us half to death just trying to stay in there and love them. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Somebody's sitting by who I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. Anybody know what I mean? When And here's the thing. Here's the thing that I kind of love about it. In those situations where love was the most work, sometimes it's that relationship that will end up 
having the most joy and satisfaction to me because I'll know, listen, there was no pulling that off. The fact that we have this relationship, there was no pulling that off. That, that was Jesus. It had to be Jesus. So there are those easy to love. We're so glad they're in our lives. And there are others that are like what the Apostle Paul describes earlier in Galatians in chapter 4 when he says this very bold thing. He said, I'm going to tell you something. I'm like a woman who is in the throes of labor trying to labor with you people. He's talking about the Galatians until Christ is formed in you. He's basically saying, I'm going to put it in my own vernacular. You're about to kill me here. You're about to kill me here. I am trying my hardest to help you grow up in the faith, and you are about to kill me in the process. You are like laboring with a baby. And you know what? Paul had to know that by faith (laughs) and not by experience because, you know, he really never has experienced nine centimeters. That's all I'm saying. I won't go further than that. I'm just simply saying he was speaking under the inspiration because actually, Paul, you have no idea how that feels, but by faith, you knew under the inspiration. I love that he says, writes to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 1, 2, and 3. Listen to this. I love these verses. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith, and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Your work of faith and your labor of love, both of them work. It is not natural at times to us to decide to get in there with our faith. And it certainly is a labor to often love. I started trying to think of the situations that really put us in the challenge to love by faith. I wondered if any of you who are listening or watching may have a parent with advanced dementia or uh, Alzheimer's, and uh, perhaps they've not only forgotten what you mean to them, but they have forgotten the act of kindness. Maybe their words are terribly uncharacteristic now, and things they say and the ways they act. It's like, I have so loved this person. But our love had been so reciprocal that it fed mine. What if that nourishment of that person's love, for whatever reason, is cut off? Is that the end of yours? Is that, is that the end of mine? What about when there's no evidence that your work of love matters at all? Then what Paul has written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is love by faith. So you have a neighbor that stands for everything you are against. Love by faith. Say you have a fellow Christians who are on the other side of every single issue you hold dear. What do you do then? You love by faith. So we're addressing what does loving by faith look like? And so the first one is, well, it looks like work. The second one is, it looks like the work doesn't work. I want you to write that down as point number two. It looks like when we're trying to work out what does loving by faith looks like, well, it looks like work, but it not only looks like work, number two is this, it looks like the work doesn't work. I mean, like, in other words, I'm doing, it, it's taking all this work, but I still can't tell it works. Mm-hmm. Expect it, expect it, because so often there will not be the evidence of it. This is part of what requires the faith. It's all this work. And I don't think it's working at all. I wanted to put this question out in front of you, and I've asked it to myself as I was preparing for you. I wonder, has anybody listening or watching today ever loved and lost? Maybe a better way to put it is, has anyone listening or watching today ever not loved and lost? Have any of us gone through life Say, say it, a couple of decades and really not ever had the opportunity to have given something everything we had and it just came to nothing. It just came to nothing. That you made this heavy investment and feel like it didn't matter. Someone you mentored perhaps, 
a, a friend, a, a spouse, a coworker. Maybe you're a teacher and it's your students. Maybe you're a, a student minister and it's your students. Your in-laws, it could be a child, whether a child that you bore from your own body or adopted, or one you just brought into your life and loved like a parent. You worked hard at it and you lost. I want you to leave something here in Galatians and I want you to go with me uh, very close by to Philippians. So you're gonna go toward Revelation, just a couple of short letters to Philippians 3. These are some of the most meaningful verses in uh, Paul's letters to me. And I would imagine also to many of you that are familiar with them, Philippians 3. Paul is talking about all the achievements he had, how he had been circumcised on the eighth day in verse 5 of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews regarding the law of Pharisee, regarding zeal, persecuting the church, regarding righteousness that is in the law, blameless. He said, but everything that was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Here's what I want to say to you. When we feel like we have lost, for those of us who are in Christ, we always get to go to the Lord and say, let me gain it in Christ. Let me gain it in Christ. Let me, and i got to tell you, this kind of thing means so much to me that the chills just went straight up both of my arms. Listen carefully to what I'm saying to you. Because before you have tasted that and, and known him with some level of intimacy, that doesn't mean a lot to you. Why, why would that ever be worth anything? I mean, this is, I'm going to be trading off somebody I could see, I could touch with the tips of my fingers, I, I, some, somebody tangible, and I'm going to trade that in for knowing this person I, I, I will not lay eyes on until I die for crying out loud. And I don't, I don't know what he's doing and, and where he is uh, most of the time. It, it seems like a really poor trade until you get a taste of it. And what I want to say to you today, because I'm hoping some Somebody's thinking, well, I do want that. I've never had a taste. Then you ask him for it. Anytime we ask in the will of God, we are going to get what we have asked. That's 1 John chapter 5. You pray in the will of God, you'll get He wants you to know Christ intimately. He wants you to know him in such a way that you go, I'm going to tell you something. That was a very, very brutal time. But what I came out of that with, I don't have any clue how I ever would have known Christ like that had I not gone through that brutal season to know him. So when you feel like you've lost, you ask for that. Then I want it, Lord. Return, then return it to me in Jesus. I don't mean you have more of Jesus than you've already had. He comes into um, our lives and, and, and dwells within us with his Holy Spirit. I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying, but to know him intimately, to come into the knowledge of him, to come into the knowledge of his grace. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There are all sorts of places to go. Uh, Colossians says that in him all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are, are hidden. And so there's so much left to know. And i got to know, Lord, if I'm going to lose, if I'm going to feel like I worked hard and lost, you be my gain. Jesus, you be my gain. Here's the third and final thing I want to say to you. Um, what does it look like to love by faith? Well, we've said it looks like work. Uh, we've said, second, that it looks like the work doesn't even work. Um, as if that is uh, not even adding insult to injury. And three, what does it look like? Well, it looks like running to Jesus. That's what it looks like. It looks like running to Jesus. And I, I want to read to you Romans 5, 5. And I count on this verse. I count on this truth. I count on this truth all the time. Because it says in Romans 5, 5, let me read it to you out of the CSV. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Listen again. God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Let me tell you something. You cannot give what you have not received when it comes to things like love. You just cannot. 
And so here we're going to try to love these people that don't love us. Maybe they don't know us. Maybe they're just cold and indifferent towards us. Or maybe they hate us. But we're called to love by faith. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like I'm going to be running to Jesus a lot. Because I'm going to say, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have this capacity here. I want to be obedient to you. But I want to tell you something. I don't have this. I don't have this. I need, I need your love. I need the love of Christ poured in my heart so that I have it to pour out on somebody else. And you know when it's his love that's pouring out through you to somebody else because it's not going to be self-centered. It's not going to be jealous. It, it's not going to be constantly um, getting offended and constantly counting all the wrongs. It's going to have the evidence. It's going to be in such a way that you're able to go, I don't know whose heart that is right now, feeling that toward that person because it is not mine. Because it's the heart and the love of Christ being poured into us. Yeah. I got to tell you, I, I was thinking today about Matthew 10, 8. Jesus saying, freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. But you see, if you don't think God has freely loved you, you're not ever going to freely love anybody else. Right. If you think you have to earn the love That's of God, right then you think everybody else does too. Yeah. So you're making everybody else earn your love because you had to learn, you had to earn God's love. And so you can tell, you can tell because when we don't know that it was freely given to us and how we have been graced beyond comprehension, then we're constantly, I mean, we are constantly calling somebody to earn it, earn it, earn it. But when we know we did not earn it, that we have been loved unimaginably and without any limit, Everything changes. Everything changes. I want to know, as we close this message, do you know Jesus? i got to tell you, we have all been through a lot in the last years, and I don't mind saying to you, we have lost faith in a whole lot of people and a whole lot of systems and a whole lot of uh, situations, but I have never in my life, I say to you, looking straight at you in this screen, I have never had more confidence in the pure gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know nothing, nothing that answers to the problems of this world and explains what the agenda of this present creation is all about and what its future is. I know nothing that explains that like the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know nothing that makes sense of the evil heart of man and how it will ever be redeemed except that there was someone sinless, the Son of God, come to earth, putting on humanity, all flesh and blood and man and mortal and all God in one. And he went to the cross and paid for our sins that we might spend eternity with God. Just one heart and mind decision away from knowing you are in the Father's hand and no one can snatch you out. Do you know Jesus personally? Have you taken him up on that invitation? As he's the spirit and the bride say, come, come, come to Jesus. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, I just ask you for someone today that is just weary, they're just weary of loving and living in their own strength, weary of trying to fix everybody else, including himself, including herself. And oh man, they just need the relief and light and love and life of a Savior. And Jesus, there is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved but yours. Oh, Lord, give them the courage to respond to the call that you are placing on their hearts right now. Come to me, you who are so burdened. Come to me. I have paid it all in the glorious and perfect name of Jesus. Amen.